from we the didn't, game? Didn't, yeah, from, from the, the game. 76ers game? I'm not kidding. I've had the hangovers now because I'm 35. I've had them for five years if I have, like, too much sugar. I have, like, sugar drop hangovers. But I'm not kidding. It was Saturday was the first time I had a hangover from adrenaline. It, are, Do you think are you this sure is, it was adrenaline? It was adrenaline. Yes. <laughs> just are you sure sign. you just like weren't really tired? Because I was tired. Just next another day sign too. that you're washed. Completely washed. And I didn't know this was a thing. Nobody told you as you get older that you get hangovers for innocuous things like adrenaline. Just life. Just life. Yeah. Like yeah, you're, you're were, feeling good. I was a little too happy on. I Friday. think I've had. I, I think I've had sir. like a stress hangover before. Oh yeah. Oh, you know. I think I've not not had a stress hangover for several years. <laughs> Certainly several months. What did you do? Nobody? Just get hooked up to an IV? Did you call, I wish. call Vita Mobile? IV? I don't know if they've ever had the phone call of like, "Hey, I had a little too much fun yesterday." <laughs> oh, you're a little hungover? No, just uh, just yeah. had too much fun. I'm a little low on life. Just went for the fluids. Yeah, exactly. I needed to needed to get better. That was not the case this morning. Yeah, <laughs> I did not have an adrenaline uh, overload this morning. Anyway, we're live. You guys want to talk? Uh, this is live. Oh, this is, this oh, is how yeah. I go into a show. Um, yeah, Welcome in, everybody, to the Loser Lounge here at DNVR <laughs> headquarters. This is a live mailbag episode. We're going to shoot the breeze a little bit here to open things up. So send in your questions while you have time. And in segments two, three, and four, we're going to get to all those questions and just talk nuggets with you. Hopefully have a lot of fun. Um, I am, of course, Adam Matis from DNVR, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Harrison Wind. Uh, what's going on? Great stuff, Harrison. Great stuff. <laughs> great, great <laughs> intro. And, of course, to my right, the lovable, the affable Brendan Vogt. Lovable. I feel like I'm going to get less lovable if the Nuggets don't get their stuff together. We all are. We're all just going to get really <laughs> annoying, <laughs> yeah. and we're going to become symbols for disappointment. Yeah, uh, symbols of disappointment. It's a uh, sick hat, Brendan. Where'd you get it? Thank you. I got it on thednvr.com. Oh, they wow. Have a, a merch section. I've heard of that site. It'll t- it'll, it's called a DNVR locker. You have to be a s- subscriber to get the merch? No. Oh, you don't? No, you don't. Anyone you, can, anyone get, the can get the that's cool right. merch. Man, that's, that's right. crazy. Yeah, so you just head on over to DNVR, thednvr.com, check out the merch section. DNVR line is live. Hats and shirts, Adam. Hats and shirts mm-hmm. and new stuff dropping all the time. Today's episode of the show, of course, sponsored as always by Total Beverage, where you can get 30, dirty 30, 30 percent off your purchase of twenty five dollars or more when you with a max purchase of seventy five use promo code DNVR twenty nineteen online or get the Total Beverage app. Go to totalbev.com or use the Total Beverage app. Um, so yeah, we kind of joked about it, guys, but last night was a rough one. And look, losses happen, and I think yep. I'm of two minds of it. And I talked about this a little bit on the show. The immediate reaction. I go back and watch every game, so it wasn't even immediate, but it was still like fresh, hours hours old. The feeling was, man, that was a really, really bad loss. Now that we've you know all slept on it, had a day between it, uh, a day of space between it. Harrison, do you feel like that was a really bad loss? I think right after the game, and I think a lot of this and a lot of my thinking had to do what Michael Malone had to say after the game and what a lot of the players did. It seemed like a really bad loss in the moment, and I still think it's a bad loss, yeah. but. The more you went back and watched it, the more I thought, man, this was just one of those special performances by Trey Young. And look, I don't think the Nuggets defense did anything or did what they needed to do to stop him or slow him down. (laughs) Clearly. Yeah. But there was also this factor of like Trey Young was just on one last night and like the Denver's defense could have been better. But but still, he did a lot of things last night that I just don't think Denver was going to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Part of it is just like. You can be up high on a guy, but if he's pulling up from the logo and he's hitting, yeah. it just is yeah. what it is, right? Man. I mean, some tough. of those shots. That was one of the most impressive. That's a top five in person performance that I've seen. Do you Man. know your other top four off no, the top of your head? No, don't me do that. <laughs> what, was this better or, or worse? The, the one I always go back to is well, the Westbrook one. It's the one I always go back to. Yeah, that was the fifty-point triple double for the record, knocking Nuggets out of the playoffs. That was brutal. I like, think he was, that he bullied yeah, them. I think that is just. Just because of everything that was at stake and just how dramatic that was, that might be my top one still. The furthest my jaw has dropped was that Golden State game in the first quarter. Oh, it's like, what, 40, oh, like God. 50 points? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. But as far whatever. as an individual performance, like you just think of like, oh, league pass alert. The Hawks are on. I'm, maybe Trey will go off, so I'll throw this game on for five minutes. Like We were in the building for the Trey Young game. Today, yeah, you know? and it was the whole game. I mean, yeah. the first quarter he was a little slow, but once he got going, oh my goodness, it was an all-out assault. <laughs> What yeah. I was disappointed with. I mean, How fun is he? Oh, he's incredible. Yeah. I think it's Steph Curry, Steve Nash hybrid, man. The it sucked watching Denver get bullied, but it was fun watching a player do what he did last night. Yeah, that was an objectively fun game to watch. Uh, yeah. For 
if you're not a Nuggets if fan. If you're not a Nuggets <laughs> fan. Now, sometimes you do have to just, like, you have to appreciate greatness. And Trey Young last night, I'm not saying he's a great player just yet, but last night he was a great player, and it was, it was impressive. I thought, I thought Denver let him get comfortable. I think with a player like Trey, Denver was up 12 to nothing in this game, and I thought they took their foot off the gas a little bit, but more to the point – you want to make it uncomfortable for a guy like Trey Young, yep. and I thought Denver got on their heels a little bit. Trey Young started to get going. He hit it in that second quarter. He hits like two really deep threes, and it's like at that point, man, his confidence is at a one hundred. Well, with a guy like that, like you said, you got to knock him down early. Like, like yeah. you got to get into him early in the first quarter because once he finds a rhythm, once he gets comfortable, yeah, it, it might be over for you. But yeah, I agree. Denver got off. What was it, twelve zero? And then yeah. you got to think they were just like. All right, this is going to be easy. And I, that's what we thought. It felt, it felt like we, it. We felt like they were going to roll when they were up 9-0, 12-0. I feel like that's what they felt too. And then, yeah, they took their foot off the gas, relaxed, and that allowed Trey Young to get in a rhythm. Yeah, it was – the defense on Trey Young It was obviously troublesome, but it was effort. It was effort. Like, they should never have been out-rebounded in that game. Um, and when you look at who the Hawks are playing in the front court, <laughs> and they were. And, like, there were some back-breaking offensive rebounds by Atlanta, and – you saw in the final four minutes, Denver woke up like, oh, wow, we're going to lose this game. And they actually almost brought it back to yeah. where reach in the final seconds. It was like, where was that sense of urgency for the last three quarters? It just seemed like they waited too well, long. Well, it, it was like partly the defense on Trey Young, partly the defense everywhere else, mainly the interior defense. Yeah. I mean, Damian Jones was like four or five from the field. Alex Lund was six or eight from the field. How many open dunks did those guys get? Oh, yeah. That was another thing. Well, but that was all Trey Young. That it was, was all Trey Young, Young. Yeah. Right. right. He was probing the baseline. Jokic was getting literally turned around. And Trey Young with those little quick one-handed whip yeah. passes, you know? Trey Young was everywhere last night. I mean, everywhere. he really was just – Denver's defense was running in circles trying to guard the, the guy. The amount that he bends your defense to one side or to the other or, like, up if he's just crossing half court is crazy. I mean, he does that to the degree that, like, a Steph Curry does. I want to pull on that thread. But first I want to take a second to remind everybody we are one week away from the live show, which I am extremely oh, excited can't about. Can't we did this. So a lot of people don't know that for Locked on Nuggets, we did this last year, a live show. And if you don't know, so next Thursday, we are doing a live show at Blake Street Tavern. You're going to want to put this on your schedule. You're going to want to come out and join us because it's a lot of fun. There's no Nuggets game that night. I think there will be some NBA games be played on the big screen behind us. But we will be having a conversation with all of our audience. And we'd like to, you have an opportunity to come on the show. We're going to have the microphone set up and then an extra microphone set up so that guests can constantly be coming up to ask their questions live in person or to participate in little games that we're going to be playing. Yeah, you guys have been like submitting your questions. This is your chance to be actually on the show. On the show, exactly, to help us host the show. And it's just going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have prize giveaways. We're going to have drink specials. It's going to be a really, really fun night. So put it on your calendar. Rain or shine, win or lose, that will be a very, very fun night. And I just can't wait for it. The details, Thursday, 7 o'clock? Is that? Yeah, we're going to release all the details right after this pod. You'll see an event okay. right and a graphic go up from the Nuggets account. Oh, that's right. I don't want to yeah. get anything wrong now, so don't put me on yeah, the spot. Yeah, Thursday, 7 p.m., Blake PM. Street Tavern. Beer, food, prizes, giveaways. You guys are going to want to be there. And we'll hang out. Like, you know, the show's done. We'll just be there hanging out at BST. So let's just let's talk hoops and and, and have some beers together. We'll also be selling some shirts and stuff. So if you've been on the fence, you want to see them in person, see what they look like, hold them up. We'll have all those for sale as well. So it'll be a cool time. So anyway, I say that I do want to talk more about, you know, just concern levels about certain things. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the Trey Young thing. He bent the defense. It was so clear how stretched out. So Denver's, if you look at Denver last night, they didn't. Um, they they gave up a ton of three pointers oh, that were on. that were good. Was, Trey Youngs were tough, but the rest of them were like Kevin Herter was getting catch and shoot um, until Jokic like broke his shoulder. <laughs> that Jesus. was brutal, man. Yeah, it was. I felt so bad yeah. for that kid. Yeah, I did it too. Like it, it did. <laughs> so bad. Just, Jokic is stronger than he looks. <laughs> um, and then uh, number two, they're giving up shots at the rim. I mean, they lived in the paint last night. Atlanta yeah. did. And then the offensive rebounds. And I've always said Denver has been good at these things especially two, three years ago at the height of their offensive ball movement, the ball is popping era, um, which sadly is an era that appears to be in the past. It was like a year and a half era. They, yeah. they, they bottle that for moments, and they certainly had it to start yeah. the game, but they don't, they don't play that way all the time anymore. But um, when you do that, when you, get, when you get that type of penetration and you're kicking and, and the ball's popping, you get threes, you get layups, and you get rebounds. And Atlanta did that to Denver. Denver hasn't done that to anybody, it seems like, this year so far. Are we concerned about that? Yeah, I think you have to be. I think you have to be. This team is is too talented to not have that impact. Um, I think part of it is 
Jamal Murray's still learning how to do that, right? He's he's prone to go off at any given moment in time, but he's not going to come in night in, night out, and bend a defense in half like that. Jokic can because he can't scheme around him. And when he's bringing it, like the difference between a C game and a great game from Jokic last night, if he had just hit those threes, yeah. we're talking about a great game. Like, and, and, and it probably changes everything for Denver's offense. Um, I think Jamal Murray, as good as he is, as good as he's looked, he's still learning how to do that. If he's going to share the rare air with the guards he aspires to be with, grouped with, you know, that's that's the next step in his evolution. Well, to do it, he's got to shoot the three. The three I mean, yeah. last night he had three three-point attempts or four three-point attempts. 0 for 4, I, I believe, but a, a, some of these were like at the end of the game. when sure. the, you, mm-hmm. don't, you almost don't get credit for those. You're just heaving up. At the, so 0 for 4, and just there's not a lot of – it doesn't seem like he's ever getting opportunities. Trey Young was generating three – he had 13 three-point attempts last night, and some of them felt forced, but forced in a way that he's capable of. Jamal Murray – it just doesn't seem like he's getting threes that you're like, oh yeah, that's his shot. Right. He's not looking a to lot get, of them. He's not he gets a looking to get threes right. either. He's not looking. Yeah. Uh, Murray's favorite shots, the shots he feels most comfortable with, are like those elbow jumpers yeah. or those jumpers like you know just in that mid range zone from the left or right wing when he can take a couple dribbles to his left and just kind of you know rise up and fade away. Those are the shots he looks to get. Like and he can hit those, but he just doesn't search out threes the way a lot of modern day point guards do. Yeah, I just want to quickly shoehorn this in because I don't want to skip his question. But we were asked why isn't Jamal shooting more threes by at nine underscore nuggets. So the same train of thought. Yeah, that's not what he's comfortable. That's not what he looks to do. That's not where he's most comfortable. So, yeah, so which he's is weird because he is shooting the three well I, this I year. I think it's worth pointing out. Last night was a game in which, in a vacuum, sure, maybe one person shooting more threes wasn't necessarily the antidote. They chucked up a lot and they missed a lot. I I'll disagree with you in this one way though. You're right that it wasn't like last night they needed to force more threes but their offense has created this game flow now that just doesn't do it and so right, right. yeah last night you wouldn't necessarily point to any one moment and say oh shoot this one or shoot that one but if you have a healthy offense you're just getting them sure, that, sure. that's the thing people i think when they talk about analytics of ruin the game or this or that it's not about go out there and jack shots i thought minnesota timberwolves went out there and jack shots against denver and they shot yeah. terribly houston north <laughs> yeah, Houston North, you know, like Houston sometimes jacks some threes and they have a transcendent player that allows them to do it. Last night, I didn't think that of, of Atlanta. Trey Young jacked a few, but right. mostly they just generated a great offense Generate. that produced yep. the byproduct of that offense was these threes, and that's what we're talking they about. They were generating the type of threes that the Nuggets used to generate. Used to generate, offense. exactly. Yeah, they we, don't anymore. Yeah, those inside out, those paint threes, those corner threes, just, they're yeah. all gone. The threes where the defense is running like a chicken with their head cut off and, you, and they still can't find the guy that's open. It also, I don't know, I'm not an ex and those guys you guys know this better than i do it doesn't seem like they do a lot off ball to get their shooters open like they run pick and rolls and dho but how often do you see murray running off screen well, well that's been a theme it. all year yeah. there's been way less ball and player movement with the yeah. nuggets offense this year than than in years past and like there's so many just one two pass possessions and then you know will barton or jamal murray back the ball out to near the half court right. line just have right. to go one-on-one uh the offense just it's so much um it's like so much more concrete. It feels yeah, it like. does feel more there, concrete. There's Robotic, just stiff. less variability. Yeah. And there's less imagination to it, it seems. And there's a statistical, like, we're not just making this up. If no. you look at Jamal Murray's three point attempt, Jamal Murray's playing a minute more than he did last season, two minutes more than he played the year before, and 12 minutes more than his rookie season. So the most minutes of his career by a pretty good. A, you know, a pretty good sample size. He's taken the fewest threes other than his rookie year, and he's almost taken the same amount as he did his rookie year on 12 fewer minutes. Huh. He is not getting three-point shots up. And so, again, it's not that he needs to be jacking them. Sure, exactly. It's that it's not a byproduct of the offense that the Nuggets are running that he finds himself in those positions. And you just you just think of all the guys that he is compared to or wants to be compared to. Dame, Steph, Trey. I mean, all of those guys Trey. Are, are known for the the way – they affect the defense's game plan just by the fact that they could pull yeah. up and put a three in your face at any moment. And some of this is a critique of Jamal, right? Um, but I think it's also a critique of the Nuggets offense and yes, where we are at right a, now because, again, I, I really do feel like some of this is a byproduct of things that he has created. I hopefully highlighted this well in the list from Tuesday's episode of the list yeah. about how he's there's some weird not being ready to shoot, stepping in and taking long twos when he had an open three. There's some of that. But I think more of it is just the fact that Denver's offense, man, gets stuck in the mud so often and they end up settling for really tough shots, often in the mid-range, often contest- contested and off the dribble. And to me, that's the uh, that's the concerning part. Can we talk about Jokic's threes yes. from these last couple of games? Because that's that's been one of my big takeaways. And you were onto this, I think, before I was. But the 
defense's game plan for, for defending the Nuggets and Jokic be, is becoming so obvious, and we saw it against Philly, yeah. Minnesota, and, and last night as well. But opposing defenses are just sagging so far off of Jokic, yep. mucking up the paint, trying to cut off cutters and blow up like pick and rolls with Murray. They're paying no mind to Jokic out beyond the three-point line, and he's having another terrible year shooting the ball from three like last year. And he's especially bad, like, above the break from three, where most of his three-pointers are coming from. So, I mean, is the Nuggets offense just going to need him to make those shots? I think, Because yes. it seems like defense yeah. are going to keep letting so him take them. All the great players this happens to. Well, this happened to LeBron James at the height of his powers in 2013, yeah. where the Spurs were like, we're going to give him this off-the-dribble mid-range shot, right. and we're not, you know, we're going right. to take, take away everything else, and... LeBron ultimately won the championship that year because he agreed to start shooting. Like He just was like, I have to do it. And I think Jokic is here right now, and he's doing it to his credit. Mm -hmm. He is taking a lot of threes. He's just not knocking them down. And yeah. the, I think defenses are looking at the Nuggets and saying there's a lot they can kill us with. But if the the if Jokic knocks down shots or not is binary. It's either yes or no. And also and that he, means he's going to be at the top of the key where he's way less yeah, dangerous than he'd sure. be if he was down lower at the elbow. But yeah. can't he knock down? Five or six threes in a game. Well, that's that. That's I think a, officially a question. I, I'm I'm clinging to how well he shot in the playoffs because that's when things matter, and he shot the lights out. But this is the second regular season in a row where he's looking closer to Embiid than Towns as a three point shooter. I was talking about this with Nick Kosmider last night. Uh, but Jokic's shooting motion. There's like so much going on. It's so long. <laughs> it's kind of like a catapult, you know. Oh yeah, it is a catapult. Like he brings it up from like right at his shoulders or below his shoulders. This high arcing release. It just feels like there's a lot that could go awry when he's in in his shooting motion. But he's hit them before. But you know, it's just inconsistent. So Jamal Murray, I think we agree, has been very good this year, but maybe good in ways that that are having ripple effects on the Nuggets offense. Jokic has been largely bad this year, despite the game winners and despite other things, and he's clearly struggling. Let's One last one before we go to break and then start taking questions, but Gary Harris is the other one to me that I just can't wrap my head around. Um, the shot, the shooting is one thing. He's not knocking down his open shots, but he's also taking some really weird ones this year. I'll start with you, Brendan. I feel like I've seen him kind of turn the corner off a of Jokic screen and then just pull the ball back out, right? As if he's yeah. not, or, or resi resigns to the floater. Or shoot the free throw or line floater, floater which is such a tough floater. shot. When when two years ago, I mean, when Gary got that, that lane, he was taking it to the rack, and he was dunking it. Yeah. And, and and so, yeah, it's not just that he's missing open shots. He, he almost looks lost to me. He looks unsure of what he wants to do, and there's not a lot of conviction and, and uh, yeah, he, he looks off. Yeah. The floaters were crazy last night. I mean, yeah. we were sitting next to each other, and I think it was like in the second quarter or something when Denver's offense was really sputtering, and he took two or three floater, th floaters in like six possessions. And he came into that game averaging 1.7 free throw attempts per game. Obviously, small sample size, that would be the lowest mark in his career. He didn't shoot a single free throw last mm. night in 40 oh, minutes. Oh, yeah. So that's part of it, too. Um, I, I don't know if the, is this. I, I My first thought is maybe he's not as comfortable playing at this weight as maybe the Nuggets had hoped. I don't know if that's just the easy answer, right? Because we can point to... I don't know, man. Different. Yeah, I don't know because he was heavier last year, but the year before that, like, was he that much heavier than he is now? I mean, I don't know if we really know those things, but... It just seemed like he was... Play Strength was such a, a fundamental part of his offensive game. Yeah. When he finished at the rim, it wasn't because he was blowing past people. It's because his shoulders were bigger and stronger. I, I think that's certainly a part of it. I mean, I... I it's a good theory. You're right that it is the easy answer, but I do think there's probably something to it. I think another part of it, and the bigger part of it to me is, Gary Harris thrived when the Nuggets had their optimal spacing, when they were at their peak spacing. Really before the Millsap era, to quite frankly, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to put this on Millsap, other things have happened over sure. this time. Millsap clearly makes the Nuggets significantly better you know, on the defensive end and overall. But there just doesn't – it seems like the Nuggets have gotten more and more compact over time, and Gary's not getting backdoor cuts like he was. He's yes. not getting a ton of curl yep. cuts. He got one in the Minnesota game, and we were all like, oh, man, vintage Gary. Like, we haven't seen <laughs> right. the Jokic-Gary connection in months. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, it just seems like the Nuggets offense, again, has taken away or has lost the thing that made him really valuable. And then some of the, PN, the pick and roll stuff that he added late in his career or, you know, in the last year or two – that stuff isn't working right now, and he has nothing else to fall back on. Yeah, last year he was developing like a savvy pocket pass as well. Like he had yep, tricks in yep. the pick and roll, and now he looks like he doesn't know. He he would like to get the ball out of his hands. And and going back to our initial point, like the Nuggets, the Nuggets do one thing 
on offense. You know what I mean? Yeah. They just run a pick, or it's a DHO, and then there's like there's no secondary actions. There's no movement off ball. There's just yeah, the DHOs aren't working. Like Yo- Jokic was to. struggling in the post last night, and yeah. I, and got discouraged from it for whatever reason. So. He was getting bodied by Bruno Fernando in the post. <laughs> yeah, come on, I don't. That's too depressing <laughs> it, to even it, talk this about. This was a team that two years ago you thought. The aggregate talent, it's not so much the aggregate talent so much as it's how do you scheme against this with yeah. all the different things they can do and all the different ways they can beat you. Right now it seems like they have one or two. All that being said, the Nuggets are 7-3. and three. They, <laughs> <laughs> All that being said, the Nuggets Dude. are 7-3. and three. They have a decent Dude. record. They have looked terrible for most of this, but they have been able to just bag some wins. Um, I, I think there's real reason to not totally hit the panic button. But let's take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about some – we're going to take your questions, questions yeah. field your questions, yeah. and get interactive. Well, we're talking about uh, the Colorado Core today. The Colorado from Core from Brewing, and uh, I, we don't have any Colorado Cores yeah, here. We don't it's have any in the fridge. Out. We got some. I love the Colorado Porter Core Juniors. Some uh, some lagers. A little too early for one of those. Uh, it's too early for a lager, <laughs> but not a vanilla Porter Junior. No, it's too early for a vanilla <laughs> Porter Junior as well. I would love a Colorado Core right now. You know who agrees with you, Michael Malone? <laughs> also, oh, too, wow. it's too, early, too early. It's too early for, for a vanilla the Michael Porter, Porter Junior. Wow. <laughs> but the uh, the Cardinal Core, I just thought of this. You know that like really terrible uh, beer company that touts their champagne of beers. Okay, yeah, that, that loser. Company. Yeah, I do yeah, know yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Cardinal Core is the Breck Brewing champagne of beers because it's terrible. No, because it kind of tastes like <laughs> apple champagne. <laughs> it does. It's actually delicious. <laughs> That's why. And not a lot of sugar. Yeah, for you keto people. <laughs> like no, myself. but Cardinal Core, though, one of my favorite beers from Breck Brewery. Guys, check it out if you haven't. It's light, good for any occasion, and uh, yeah, just just another great beer from a great company. Let us know your favorite brewing. too. I'm always curious what people think. Yeah. Before we get to some more questions, though, Piper Electric has been serving the Denver metro area since 1983 through a commitment to customer service and team performance. Piper Electric is the hometown electrical contractor that you can trust. If you call 303-646-6765, they will give you the DNVR hookup. To save you 20% off your next service call. No job is too big or too small for Piper Electric. They work with the top professionalism and integrity in the biz, whether it's residential, commercial, or industrial work. Don't forget, you have to call 303-646-6765 to receive 20% off your next service call. Questions. Let's take some questions. This one comes to us from at Jaron XYZ, friend of the, the, of homie. the handle. Uh, what are some positives to have come out of the Nuggets starting? Uh, very slow offensively oh, outside like of getting one. back-to-back Jokic game Bring winners. the positivity. Get those ions. So, out, so the Nuggets have started very – so specifically he means they have started slowly offensively, but is there a silver lining? It seems like that's what he's getting at, picking at with that question. I think there's a bunch. Yeah. Please. Well, number one, Will Barton is a player, and, like, that was a real question. Will Barton has been saving the Nuggets offense here over the last couple of weeks. Can you imagine where this team would be three if and it seven. wasn't for Will Barton? Three and seven? I mean, like, yeah. yeah. Not that he single-handedly did it, but he's done enough things in every game that's like, yeah, they needed guys to make plays. He's a couple, like, big moments every single game. Big rebounds. Will to win moments. (laughs) Oh, wow. That wasn't enough. Yeah, that wasn't a – you really meant it as a – But I think the question he's asking is not, like, individual. Because Paul Millsap's been a positive. Mm -hmm. I think Paul Millsap's played really well. But I think he's more talking about, like – you know, last year when everybody got hurt but Murray and Jokic, the Murray-Jokic two-man game developed right. in its absence, and then you had that as a weapon. Is there anything right now that's coming out of this? And the one thing I will say is the Nuggets have learned how to win with defense. I still think this is an offensive team, not a defensive one, and maybe they're swimming up up against the stream, up the grain. Are they up, up, the, up, the, up stream. the stream against the against the, stream. Against against the, the stream current? Against the grain. They're Oof. up the current against the stream. But right now they are the Nuggets are doing that. But I think that – uh. You know, but the, it, there is something to be said for when you learn that you can win with defense. Your offense doesn't have to always be there. I would like it to be there sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like a game or two. I think the defense is real. Uh, I really do. And um, I just feel like Mike Malone has brainwashed his guys into yeah. believing that they can win with defense. And but that here's, they need to establish defense how, first. How many games can they win like this, though? I kind of feel like la- well, like this. That's what I mean. Like we're ten games into this, and it feels exhausting. Last year was a healthier balance. Last year was a healthier balance. I, I thought the defense was improved, but we saw more flashes. So I looked this up actually. I looked this up before this last game, but through nine games last year, they had like the fourth or fifth best defense in the league, like they do this year. Their offense, though, was like eleven. Yeah. So you know their defense still started really strong last year, and they were leaning on that, but their offense was way above where it is right now. Mm. 
that's the difference. Is there any other positives that could come out of this? I look. I, the, we saw it in the playoffs. Sometimes winning those games are about winning the games when you don't have it. And yeah. it's, it's a cliche. We we've touched on it before, but <laughs> there's value to there's like I I do think it's. Two years ago, Denver probably wouldn't have said, we know we can win games this way. It won't carry them far enough, but at least it's a card in their hand now. I want to make – I'm going to wade into some muddy waters here okay. because this is pure conjecture, but I want to start talking about it because I, I do think there is something that could be there. The Nuggets, one other positive that can come out of this. I feel, and I don't know how you guys feel, I feel like there's a little bit of a leadership changing of the guards – Jamal Murray is taking some of the leadership. I don't think it's a little, but I think it's a, it's a, a big lot. And it's, of the guard. and it's sort of a big storyline. And, like, look, we don't actually know what goes on behind closed doors, so it's hard for us to comment on this. But one thing I wonder about when he asked about positives, you know, I don't know what the healthy balance is for this is your team, this is my team, this is your moment to talk. What you're, it's not, but I don't think the Nuggets have struck the right balance yet, whatever it is. I think they're still trying to figure that out. And Jokic has seemed especially interested in allowing Jamal Murray to do that. It's just seen yep. from an outsider perspective. And I don't know that that is necessarily the most healthy thing. We None of us think Jokic is like this pure leader, right? I mean, he has no. certain types of leadership qualities. But I'm not sure it's healthy for him to be the like full-on, oh, that's not my job. And I wonder if the last 10 games have been a little bit of that where it's like, hey, man, no matter what role you think you have on this team, you still have to be a guy that is more than what you are to this team from that facet. And that you still probably have the best idea of how to succeed offensively as a team. Yeah. And you being communicative and, and being a leader in that way, um, there's a healthier balance to strike. But I do think there's something about the way that these two guys go hand in hand where, like, if they can strike the balance of Jokic is vocal and respected on the court and the leader on the court, but Murray gets to be introduced last. Murray gets the yeah. big scrum. Murray gets which, by the way, the has billboard. happened, and it's it might be a little thing, but it might also not be. And I'm not saying like there's tension about who gets to do that, but it is a symbolic thing. It's very symbolic. Jokic was the guy on opening night, and yeah. he was for the last several years. Now it's Jamal Murray, and again, I don't think the players sat down and are like, "Well, I want to be." I, want, I don't think it's like that, no. but it is a symbolic thing where it's like, "Yeah, Murray kind of is the last the the guy right now." I think. Brendan was on to something and ideally you want those guys to share the leadership responsibility 50 50 I think mm. you know in the final form of the Nuggets you know Millsap is still you know in there to an extent right now Barton's still in there just like from a leadership standpoint but ideally I think you want it to be I don't know like 40 40 Millsap or 40 40 Jokic and Murray and then everybody fills in but Murray he's the raw raw guy mm -hmm. he's the one in the locker room given that passionate pregame speech that gets every fire everybody fired up and, and then Jokic is the guy who's more lead by example but you know on the court he's you know really instructing guys and whatnot if those two can strike the right balance I think that's ideal one of the things you're saying is that Jokic's body body language matters it matters a lot because honestly like this team kind of falls in line behind Jokic if he's engaged if he's moving on the offensive end everybody's moving when he's standing, everybody's standing. This is why your quote was so great that you got out of him and your story from last week of Murray talking about, I realize that everybody's always watching me. Yep. And I realized I have to carry myself mm -hmm. different, even when I'm not feeling it or whatever. And it's like, that is the acceptance of the role and the money you're being paid. Mm -hmm. Jokic doesn't seem to have that same appreciation no. because guys are always watching him. Murray has had that awakening. Jokic has not. Yeah. Jokic knows it, but... He's never going to accept it. Right? Yeah, it's a, that's the thing is I think he knows this. He just doesn't. He can't help himself or doesn't yeah, want to help himself. He's always going to rage against that. All right, great question. Um, will and when do you think this Nuggets team will be playing at the level they were last year that is a top three team in the Western Conference? <sighs> <laughs> the scary part this about all this is question. you just don't know, right? Yeah, I mean, a tough question. The, the, this is implied. He's implying that they will. And – I think that they will too. Gun to my head, I would say I think that they do at some point. But I will too. we're ten games in, guys. This isn't. We're no longer on the sample size where we can say. But it's I, I I do also like there is still some legitimate pushback. Like yes, the vibes off. Yes, this isn't how they're going to win a title. But they are seven and three. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, but but the question was when can they get back to the the sure, offensive sure. style of right, play? That, the that makes, grand, but yeah. I'm just saying like more teams have experienced some turbulence getting off the runway than just Denver. Like, yeah, oh, oh, oh yeah. Like there are three teams oh, yeah. that look like they're firing on all cylinders. Portland's so tail but spinning. Denver was supposed to be the team with the continuity. Yes. Yeah. With yep. the easy schedule. Back. 
easy schedule, and the easy schedule has helped them get the seven and three. Yeah, so that's so true. But they're supposed to be the team that was doing what they were doing last season right at the start of the year. I'll, I'll say it's not a will, it's an if, and it's a when Jokic accepts the things we just talked about. Which when is, it which clicks is, for him this yeah, year. Yeah, which is like, hey, everybody's always watching me. And and right, and right so I don't I don't even mean play better. I mean lead by example mm. and, and care more. I, I think there's one of two things that are going to happen for, in order for them to get to that point. One is that they just have this like breakout game. And I thought we were getting it last night. It only Tw- takes one or two games sometimes. Man, sometimes you just have that moment and or everybody feels like good quarter. about themselves. Why and like take a quarter? Yeah, and you're just like, it's like, okay, now we're back. And I thought that was going to happen last night. 12-0. I was like, okay, here's a game. Denver goes wins one twenty to eighty five. But they called timeout, and I know we all looked at each other and said they're rolling. They're rolling, and then rolling. right out of the timeout, Denver gets a steal and then gets a three, and it's like, oh, this is it, man. Yeah. Atlanta has no answers. Well, they did have an answer. Um, so it's either that moment where Denver just goes on a big run and you feel good about yourself and everything's great. You know what it is? You know what it is? Or the the second part of this is you hit the rock bottom. And everything comes to a head. Like this tension that's been hanging over everything actually becomes, you know, hopefully not a players only meeting. That's what it took at times last year. Yeah. A little bit of rock bottom. But, or it takes something where it's like, you know, if Jokic does have a grievance with something or someone or whatever it is, actually voicing it, and maybe there's a really uncomfortable day or feel a series of days, but it's like we just had to clear the air to move forward. So I don't know. It, you know what it reminds me of? You guys seen the movie Almost Famous? Yeah, yeah, of course. So you know the Tiny Dancer scene, right? Of course. It's like rock bottom. You get on the bus, and there's just like this vibe, and it's like, you know what? That's right. We're a rock band or whatever. Like, Denver needs that moment yeah. where it's like we whip. a little cathartic moment of like, what are we all stressed about? What are we all upset about? We're good, and this is fun, and we're and, back. And that's why I think it, it's just going to take one of those games, uh, one maybe even just one of those halves or just two really strong wins where everything clicks they hit some open threes and then they're just back we got to invite Jokic to our house party it might not be and like worst. have him take lsg jump which is what happened in the movie the jump yeah. off the roof and then he's good it may not be the worst thing that it t- that it's happening <laughs> now right it may not be the worst thing that it's happening now whatever this sort of sputter is but that all supposes that they come out the other side it, um somewhat piggybacking off of that question lots of pe- this comes to us from jake Sixteen three four seven nine zero zero. Lots of Russian bot. Out there. Sure. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of people were banking on continuity and internal improvement. How many guys can we actually say are playing better than last season so far? <laughs> His count is two. He has Jamal Murray and Will Barton the third. Uh, Paul Millsap. Paul Millsap. But, but the funny thing is, Millsap isn't supposed to be playing better. No. Yes. Neither is Barton really. I mean, well, Barton's uh, Bar- yeah. better than last year, but he's playing better than I think ever, actually. I think Barton is, like, the best as version. Yeah, right as now. good as he's ever looked. Yeah, I'd say he looks like himself from two years ago, yeah. yeah. I would agree with that. But I, I generally, yeah, you could throw Millsap in there, but it's true. Just about everyone well, else yeah. looks And like I'm it. so mixed on the Jamal thing. I'm impressed with his leadership. I'm impressed with his effort. It hasn't been there the last two nights or two games, but I think there might be a foot injury, too, that, I mean, I a mysterious. Well, he looked very hobbled. He last looked night. hobbled he did last not night. Close to one hundred percent last night. But I will. I'll throw him in that category just because I think he has deserved it. But yeah. is there anyone well, else? It's definitely not anybody on the bench. That's for sure. Oh man. Would um, Mason Plumley? I feel like he's been about what he was yeah. last year. Maybe. I but mean, he's another guy that shouldn't yeah. be better. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, Monte. He looks no. a little better now, but he's not better. No. Malik. Malik no. no. Tori. No. Well, 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 yeah, watch out. Watch out. I mean, let's find Wancho out. could be way better than he was last year, but we'll never know. Man, let's just do this one game. Can we just do it? Can we just play Michael Porter Jr. Like watch out with Jokic a like bunch and see? would have been the game. Yeah, it um, was. And, and honestly, you're right. Last night was the game, and I think Malone was down to try it, but the Nuggets didn't reward him by getting yeah. a big enough lead. I want to hit on this. Uh, this just came through the periscope from uh, must have been underscore the roses. What do you guys make of Monte this year? Seems like he took a few steps back. We were just talking on it, but let's flesh it out. I think he's been better as of late. Yeah, yeah, he has been a little not, better. Not a surprise that he looked better in extended minutes and extended minutes alongside starters last night. This is the big piece for me. First of all, the Tory Craig, uh, Jeremy Grant, Mason Plumley lineup is already you're starting with like a okay three guys that maybe don't necessarily mesh well, mm-hmm. but then also just the shorter minutes and full on line changes. I think has really that unit doesn't look good together collectively, yep. and the fact that they're playing such spotty minutes. I, th- I think is really tough. And Malone has actually tried to buy them some. I thought he left them in too long this last game. They had done a really good job. Jokic had done such a bad job, but then he let them ride it out to like the six minute mark, right. and they kind of gave up the lead before the starters came back in. But I'm not worried about Monte at all, though. 
I mean, out of really, all, at all? No, I'm not. Out of all the bench guys, I'm worried about him the least, probably. I expected <laughs> some regression. I'll be honest. Like Monte Segura last year, if that's just who he was gonna be for 10, 11, 12 years, my goodness. Malik Beasley is now. Is it three games? Like he played a little bit of the Philly game and then sat, and then sat all of Minnesota, then sat all this one. It's a long sickness. At uh, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, a long, long sickness. sickness. And this we have another question from John Neon. Is Malik Beasley this year's Trey Lyles, a promising young player oh, the fan base loved? Oh, I mean, wanted the front office to reach an extension God. with, only to start the year out bad. Oh you. God! Don't bring that nastiness in here. I mean, look, he hasn't been good. He's missed a bunch of games. Um, He's considerably better than Trey Lyles. I don't know. Trey <laughs> Lyles had a very good year. Oh man, that is two true. years ago. When man. Millsap was out, he was shooting like forty three percent from three. Year. Yikes! I haven't thought about that, but now I want to jump off a bridge. Are I don't think so. Let's let's pump the brakes on Beasley. No, let's give him I a thought, little bit I've more. I've actually thought about that a lot, and I think really, yeah, you've thought about that exact thing. If he's this year's Trey yes. Lyles, oh, I mean, it's impossible not to make. Was that comparison. your question? Did you write that? <laughs> Restricted for agency, same agent turning down an extension. Oh, oh God. you're right about same all that. Same situation. Oh, all right, God. so what we're, we've been talking. Six man. We're we're talking <laughs> about this bench. This one comes to us from uh, John Ro- J. Roberts, second end swish. Would putting Barton on the bench, even though he's been the best option at the posi- at starting, in a Lou Williams type role, is that a possibility to, to spark some life? In the- I, I think it might spark some death in the starters more than Ooh. it sparks life in the. Right. If in you the make that unit. move, you have to put Wancho into the starting lineup. You I can't think. because Tory. you cannot start Tory Craig. We have two years of data that says the starters with Tory Craig is a terrible lineup. It's not just bad, it's terrible. Yeah, you can't you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do it. Um and I don't even know if you could put Wancho like Look, here's here's the sneaky thing about it. Jamal Murray is a good ball. The the Nuggets lack guys that can get dribble penetration. Somebody put this on Twitter the other day and I laughed at it. They were like, "Do you think this is that Jokic if he's not creating offense, they don't create good shots?" And I was like, "Yes, of course. He is the only guy that generates yeah. like good looks for everyone." Barton can go off by himself. But you do need the second ball handler, and Barton is easily the second best ball handler on this team behind Jamal. You wouldn't have needed that if Gary was the type of initiator exactly. that he was last year. He's not this year. Though. Yeah. That's and, why you need Barton. And more to it, um, it must have been the Roses ads, and would Barton accept a six-man role at this point? He's done it before, but he's a prideful guy who, who you know, I think he would if Malone asked him to. But I think <laughs> If Barton's it was earned. obvious but, that... That is exactly what the team needed. I think he would, but I think it's yeah. pretty clear that's not, yeah. that's not what the exactly team needs. I would agree with that. Here, here's my thing about the bench real quick. Coming into this season, the bench lineup that I projected would be Denver's go-to bench lineup. Monte Morris, Jamal Murray, two guys who played together a ton off the bench last year. They're good. Malik Beasley, Jeremy Grant, who would take the place of Trey Lyles, and Mason Plumley. That's a good that lineup. That is the yeah. lineup I thought would be Denver's primary bench lineup. But because the Nuggets have insisted on playing 10 guys in their rotation, that lineup hasn't played at all together. They play like two or three possessions the entire year. Wow. And I still think that lineup could be a very effective one, and I'm waiting for Denver to go. Malone, Malone needs to change the, lo- the rotation, I think. Yeah, Ferdinand Chad wants to know, what about getting getting Jokic more time with bench guys as well? Is that the key, changing the key, it the way? But I, also getting Jokic more lines with offensive line. I mean, look, the Nuggets' rhythm is off. They need to get their rhythm down, and I think giving Jokic a Murray, um, Barton, uh, Michael Porter Jr., Jeremy Grant combo, or you know maybe it's uh, Murray and Monte as you mentioned, or Beasley. Just give him more off. Like you're okay, your defense isn't going to be great in this lineup, but it's the end of the second quarter. We can, or you know, middle of the second quarter, we can afford it right now. Give that. See if you can't get some offensive rhythm going. Yeah. I'm I'm just waiting to see that bench lineup, the uh, the Murray Morris Beasley Grant Plumley one. I, I think it can be a good lineup, and I'm I'm waiting for Denver to roll it out. Mm. Um, if this, Beasley. This one comes to us from uh, V8 Holden Tiger on YouTube. Uh, I went into the I went in assuming we'd see uh, that Denver would win all of their home games this season. They pretty much lost that advantage. Seemingly, uh, do they need to up the pace? The question is, is it pace? I, I think y- yes. It seems like we're all in agreement I, there. I think they could up it a little, but they've played at a snail's pace with Jokic for the last couple of years, and I've been on this, but the difference is they've been one of the best half-court offenses in the league over the last couple of years. They're terrible in the half-court. They're in the bottom five in the league in the half-court this year. So, I mean, if they're not executing the half-court, yeah, maybe you should up the pace a little bit. I, I agree. I think I do think they should up the pace, though. Um, but I also think that that's not this like this – their half court offense it's sucks. It's not the the magic yeah. card that's gonna work. Um, 
having watched all 10 games, I, f- I have the feeling Murray looks even slower than last year. I think his lack of quickness is his biggest weakness, and the reason why it looks like he has to work so hard to take difficult shots. Mm. Uh, what's your take? We've touched on this a bit, but. Yeah, I mean, he's never been, like, the super quick guy. He, he does not have the first step of a Lillard, who I've compared him to a lot, and, and that's why you see him taking a lot of difficult shots because he can't get that separation that a lot of the top point guards do right now. At the Hamburglar 77. Ooh, the Hamburglar. Can we officially say this is not a good shooting team? No. No. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm holding agree. out hope. This should be a better shooting team. Y- than you know is. what they are? They're a streaky shooting team. Oh, that's a terrible. They are yeah. cold when they're cold, and they are hot when they're hot. Jokic is better than 20% or whatever he's shooting right now. Gary Harris is better than whatever percentage he's putting up. Monte Morris probably a little better, too. <laughs> Paul Millsap maybe a little worse, though. Yeah, you don't think Millsap's a 50% yeah. shooter? Yeah, M- Millsap saving the day. <laughs> Millsap, consummate pro, always brings it. At Drapola. Uh, do you think any moves will be made by the trade deadline? And if so, who do you think the Nuggets should target? I want to piggyback. Someone else asked that question and said, please exclude Andre Iguodala, But No, okay, it's fine. Let's do it. <laughs> no, here's one thing I will say. I, one question I have about this team. We've all talked about the continuity versus stale discussion. This team kind of feels stale. They do feel stale. They feel a little it stale, feels man. It like they've heard each other's and their coach's voice for oh. three, four years, and it was all attached to these heavy stakes for most of that time. And now they're at this. They've turned the corner. They're waiting for April, and yeah. I think they this might is be a sick really of, interesting take. of what each other has to say, yeah. what we have to say. These the cycles of the season, the whole thing. We are talking about some of the same stuff, and it means they're probably reading some of the same stuff no and feeling some of the same stuff. But you know, when Will Barton arrived back in 2014, it was an injection of life into the organization because he was so hungry. And I think all of these guys are hungry, but like Malik Beasley's hungry to be paid and for his chance to step into the limelight. There's some of that. Sometimes I think you need to just get the guy. I mean, Bradley Beal in hindsight would have been such a great addition because yeah. Bradley Beal has been in purgatory for a couple seasons now. Yep. And like, just how have, excited would he be to join a oh, playoff bound team that like could Denver? actually win a championship? Yeah. And it would be one of those things where I think everybody would be looking around and being like, "Oh yeah, it doesn't suck that bad here." And like, he starts telling the stories about, "Oh yeah, when we were five and twenty-eight last year, and this sucked." and it's like, oh, yeah, we don't have it that bad. So um, I do think Denver I, – I, and, look, I was supportive of them. We made the shirt, we don't skip steps. Like, we were so in supportive of them bringing this team back. So I was wrong on this, too, or at least I feel like I was wrong at this point. But I do feel like this roster is in desperate need of a move. And I, and I think they have to nail that move. Is it a big move? Is it a Bradley Beal-type move? Denver or can't make big moves. lower to medium move? I think it's a lower to medium move, but again, those are the, the margins are what we're talking. I mean, some of the players we're talking about that are hurting Denver right now. You know, Malik Beasley hasn't even played, yep. but w- they need him to be good. Jeremy Grant hasn't that, been that see, injection that's part of life. Of it is, I thought we all kind of expected that from Grant, and and he's had a rough start. Yeah, he has. He has had a rough start, but also he hasn't been playing in the situations and in in the role that we kind of expected, right? I mean, he's yeah. shooting a ton of threes, playing alongside Mason Plumlee and mm-hmm. stuff right now. Yeah, What's um, Andre, you're good, man. You can just do what you need. Is a, oh. uh, come on in. <laughs> you can hop in. It doesn't in, matter. Yeah. Is Malone restricting MPJ's minutes out of health caution? He looked good, in my opinion. Give him 20 a night. I don't think it's health. <laughs> I, don't I don't think it's health, health either. Yeah, I don't think all. it's health at all. I think it's rebounding. I think it's defense. Um, uh, I do. Someone else wants to know, is, is part of the best way to get the second unit going, more minutes for MPJ, but also getting him more involved when he's out there? He is kind of spacey when he's out there right now. Like... Mm-hmm. He looks afraid to make a mistake to yeah. me. Yeah, he looks afraid to dribble. He looks afraid to mess up. I think – so, MPJ, it's funny. He's been – some of these bench lineups that have featured the three non-shooters we we're talking about, Torrey Craig. I'm throwing Jeremy Grant in there because he's a little bit of a shooter but not a lot. And then Mason Plumley. When you throw out those three guys, none of them generate – their own offense you know like Mason Plumlee does that running hook and he can pass from the top of the key but they need Michael Porter Jr. to be an attacker and it's weird because you can tell he's out there and like I don't need to be too aggressive I need to play within a system and it's he's getting in my opinion I can imagine him having some mixed signals not deliberate like Michael Malone's giving him but just in that he's trying to not be too selfish but they actually need him to be selfish. I feel like he's battling it internally yes internally yep I gotta think he's saying to himself like wow like I gotta start looking for my shot but then there's somebody on his other shoulder saying, 
you know, play within the offense, yeah. play your role, play the Don't system. Don't be a ball hog. That's what's going to get you more playing time going forward. I think he's battling it. Internally. Yeah, and I was like overthinking it. I would agree with that. Um, I also think that he needs to play more minutes with Jokic. One, Jokic yeah. seems to want this. I mean, like he cheers very loud, and it's not lost on me that he does this when mm-hmm. every time MPJ does anything. But also, you want Michael Porter Jr. to be built good habits. Give him some spacing and give him a player that's always going to reward him for cutting and moving. Yes. That second unit isn't it again. that second unit isn't that. They run spread pick and roll with Monte and, and Mason a lot and there's a lot of just standing around waiting. Put him with Jokic, let him try to get in that flow offense and he's going to be cutting and scoring. Would bo- This is by the way I think a necessary thing for the Nuggets. This we're 10 games in. I think the rotation really does need an overall. And I think Malone alluded to this last night. He did. I was going to say I alluded to this on the show last night, but Malone is stubborn. When especially when the team is winning, like he doesn't like to make an adjustment when things are going well. Right. But sometimes it's like you're winning, but it, this isn't going well. Last night they lost, and I that's why I kind of think Malone is ready to make the adjustments. Well, the biggest quote <laughs> I thought he had last night was, and I actually can't believe he said this, but he said like maybe we need one of our top scores on the floor at all times to kind of carry us offensively. And mm. what does that mean? That means, in my opinion, playing Jamal with the bench pretty yeah. exclusively. Yeah. I think that's the big adjustment we'll see. Would Bogdan Bogdanovich make for a good fit on this Denver team? Of course. The guy's yeah. a good player. Yeah. I mean, Nuggets need guys that can actually like create their own offense, which he can do, and they need guys that can knock down shots, which he can do. Now, defensively, I don't know. I mean, if you're just talking about straight replacing Gary Harris, like right now, yeah, that might work. Although, we should say this. Gary Harris has been fantastic defensively. All NBA level defensively. Yeah, he's been really, really good. And Denver, if they were to replace him with a player like Bogey, their offense would start to look like what we expect. But what but would they lose defensively? I Maybe maybe too much. I maybe don't know. too much. But also, like the bou- this is not the perfect bounce. Like, f- top five offense is awesome. Uh, defense is awesome. but <laughs> Terrible offense, yeah. Offense? I mean, yeah. something might need yeah. to change. Should we uh, hit a quick break real quick? Let's do it. The Green Solution. Has 17 Colorado locations and an express checkout to get you in and out as fast as possible. Get on your phone right now. Go to their website, mygreensolution.com. Order your flower, concentrates, edibles, and topicals online. And head to the closest Green Solution for pickup. Use code DNVR20 for 20% off of your entire purchase. Do we have any more questions? We, we have a lot of questions. We have I'm a looking lot over here. Questions. We had so many people. Um, is there always this comes to us from Corey C underscore Blake zero five? Will there always be a spread pick and roll team out there that just has the Nuggets number? Uh, we saw <laughs> the Hawks. James Harden we saw the Hawks kill Denver last night. Houston always kills Denver, and then the Mavs gave them problems both yeah. last season and this season. Yeah. The answer to that question is yes. I don't. I wish I had more. Yes, it seems like yes is the answer. Yeah, you got to be able to bottle up that pick and roll better, which requires both really good guards and really mobile bigs, which Denver has neither. Um, and then you need length, I think, on the backside. And, you know, when Millsap's in there, I think it's a lot better. But I just think that the teams that can really bottle these things up, like at the Milwaukee's of the world, they're just really long, really mobile. Mm-hmm. Denver is moving in that direction. Jeremy Grant, I think, has that profile. Michael Porter Jr. is long. Jared Vanderbilt. Jared fits Vanderbilt that fits that profile. So there's Will Barton even kind of fits that profile, especially if he was a two. So yeah. they're moving in that direction. But I think with this team right now, and especially with Jokic as slow as he is at this moment, the answer is no. I would be very or worried yes. about playing the Rockets, and Denver actually matches up with the Rockets here soon, right? I think oh yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, so they go Brooklyn, Memphis, and then Houston. Yeah. You want to talk about like how funny sports is though? What if they just whipped Houston when everything feels <laughs> well, so? Well, Houston has some injuries right now. Eric Gordon's yeah. out. They, I don't think they're a hundred percent by any means. But they probably won't. I think the answer <laughs> to that is yes. I think they just don't have the right personnel. Um, why is this team not fun to watch anymore? Man, this is a layered it's because, question. It's because they suck on offense yeah. right now. That's the biggest reason. That's a great question. They're borderline unwatchable on the offensive end, which is just crazy. It's crazy. The talent they have, the creativity, the fun players they have on offense, and they're this bad. They're not having fun. That's this is, yeah. that was you know what I was going to say. Yeah. And then last year, from the jump, again, expectations are a big part of this. Last year, Denver came out. And they were eight and one, nine and one, and but we didn't expect this. And I think not just we as fans and media, but the players. There was this energy of like that youthful ignorance of sky's the limit, right? Who yeah. can stop us? Only us. This year, there's none of that. I think it starts with Yoke because you know what's funny is after the first malaise of the season, which came around games three and four. Um, either, I got either of you guys. Yeah, go oh, ahead, go <laughs> ahead, go ahead. after like games three or four. Um, 
the bench started getting up and standing for most of the games, and like you could yeah. tell that was a deliberate. Like we got to try to inject some life into this. Yeah. They're, I think people are trying. Yoke's the one that like Wancho's is the biggest trying. moper. Wancho has a tailored celebration for every single member on the Nuggets <laughs> roster that he goes to when some guy scores. Check out his Millsap first team all bench. Yeah, first team all bench celebrator. All time world class. Yeah, first ballot. No, but that they're not. Yeah, the be- if you watch the team on the bench and in huddles, there's. I don't want to, like they're not. I don't want to purport that they're like sick of each other or anything, but they're, that life isn't there. They're. Tr- I think they're trying though. Like some of the bench guys are. Tr- it's like when you're faking like Jared and Wancho are. Yeah. 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 yeah but it's it. No, I agree. It, it almost feels like they've been commissioned to cheer by the coaches. <laughs> Do you know that seed? Do you guys watch Love Actually? Um, yeah, I've seen it. No, you um, don't know it when the mom finds the ring and realizes her husband's cheating that she has to go out and like tell the kids like, "Oh, Merry Christmas." Yep. That's how all the <laughs> the kids are. They're all putting Just on the put brave on, face. Put on a happy yeah. face. Put on a brave face. Like, guys, Wancho, we can totally I know do you this. haven't played in a year. You get out there and you smile. <laughs> and you smile and tell everyone it's gonna be okay. But I like, swear to God, if they if Wancho plays just the possession, like it immediately injects some life into the team. Yeah, like, more so than anybody. It all starts with Yoke. I mean, again, I agree I, it just starts with Yoke. He looks miserable, and I think it's a it's a real drag. Another thing too is like this; th- these are not like volatile personalities. Like this is a very flat line yeah. locker room. Oh my god, so when you're you don't right. Have the excitement of like the wins themselves. Like there's almost nothing to glom onto. Like Jamal and Gary are just kind of like. Eh. This feels like a Jimmy Butler team, but without Jimmy Butler. <laughs> 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 Maybe Michael Malone's Jimmy Butler. Oh God! I, what an interesting I, take. He kind of. I feel like. Do you think he needs? To, actually, this is a great question. Uh, okay. Do you think that he needs to change the? T- he's naturally intense and naturally sort of not. I don't want to say negative, but just like look, they were up by twenty points yes. against uh, Miami, and he was like screaming and calling timeouts. Right. Do you well, think? Well, I he- mean, they're seven and three, and he's ripped them in the post game already once and yeah. almost twice. I felt like he was almost going to go there last night. But he but like, stopped and called. I was like, it, yeah. I already did it once after New Orleans game. We're seven and three. I'm going to save it. Coaching is so hard. I think there's no <laughs> doubt about it. I think there's no, and that w- goes back to what we were hitting on earlier about maybe things getting stale. I mean, it, if I'm in, if I'm in year four of this. And I had we had the year we had last year, and we're we're six and two or five and two, and Malone's calling timeouts with a twenty five point lead to lambast me. Like, guess what, man? This isn't fun. Yeah, lighten up, loosen up. And he might be right in that they're lacking the real championship mentality that they aspire towards, but it doesn't mean he's right in how he's going about it every day because people do not respond the same way. There's a, but a, he should have a pretty good sense of this roster and how they'll react to his coaching now. Shouldn't he? Yes, but, but he he also this is a lesson he has to learn every year because it's just his nature is intensity. And his nature yeah. is to tighten his grip on the steering yep. wheel. And yeah. as they won more and more games last year, he realized he had to loosen up. But it's a compounding effect when it goes the other way. The more they lose, the tighter the grip gets and the less control they have. But this is actual maturity, right? Because a lot of times people are who they are. By na- I really believe this. It's very hard to impossible for a person for sure. to change their nature. But what you can be do is be conscious of your nature and then like constantly be trying t- for you to fight against it. And I think that grabbing the steering wheel extra tight is such a great thing because his nature is always that. And it's like he's not going to change what his instinct is. He can change how he reacts to it. But my God, gentlemen, we have been negative today. And, of course, we're following a loss. This is, this is kind of how it goes and things don't feel great. Um, but we have some people in the Periscope reminding us, let's not get too scared, 7-3. and three. And we have some questions about what is the real concern level? Where's the DEF CON? So let, let's, let's I don't like DEF CON. Can we just do 1-10? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll because I don't – again, it goes down. Confused. Yeah, it goes yeah, down yeah, and then DEF like, yeah. Uh, so we're 1-10. So to 10 is, 10 is the worst. Let's go pragmatic, right? Let's try to ditch the emotional sure. moment of losing sure. to Atlanta. Where are we at with Denver, 1-10? through 10. 10 being pain. For the record, can I say something? I don't feel like my takes on this have been emotional or whatever. Like we've, I, I, I still feel like everything we're talking about is an actual concern. Yes, yeah. It's not like uh, yeah. we're making things up well, on the, it. We're, it's a weird. Sorry, there's a weird crossroads because th- these people are right and that the record is what it is. But I think anyone who watched the team last year and watched it this year knows there are legitimate concerns. Exactly. But, but how does that extend across 82? Um, years? I think I'm generally less concerned than than most people are. I'd say I'm like a three right now. Oh wow, I'm that's not, really. I'm not very concerned. That's super unconcerned. Yeah. Um, I'll go, I'll say I'm a six. Okay. Which is again like, I I'd guess call I you guess a ten, again, bro. Again, again, however you calibrate this is interesting because does five mean you are like middle of the road or is five mean you're? I think is like, zero middle of the road. I feel like, like zero is you have <laughs> no concerns at all. You're, okay. This team is great. 
Then I would say I'm a five, I guess. I'm going to go five. My thing, and the reason I'm so low, is I think this can flip I do any too. game. I do, too. I think this can really just take a quarter or, or a really good half, and suddenly well, we're talking about how great this team is and how fun they are again. They blew out a tire in the second quarter, but they were well on their way to a blowout. Right. If, they blow, yeah. if they blow out Atlanta, they're 8-3 and three with two winnable games, or 8-2 eight eight two. Two with two winnable games and a chance to have a better record yeah. than last That's year. That's why my concern is so low, because I think it can flip so quickly. Sports. I think so much of this has to do with Jokic, as it always does. Like, I mean... I talk about him an extra amount, but it's because yeah. so much of the other stuff is the margins. Even like Jamal Murray's great as he is, he's still like, you know, he elevates their ceiling, but Jokic is the one that makes them uh, just an all around good team, and he's been not good. And I feel like he can be good, and he can be happier, and he can be more pot in, and whatever, and he's not that right now. And if and when he does, I do feel like a lot of Denver's problems will start to be solved. I am, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged because. I would have thought that this is a team that's not capable of winning games, even against shorthanded opponents, if the vibe was off and Jokic looked this disengaged. Mm -hmm. And w I think we're spot on about what it's going to take for Murray to get to the 180 million level. But it's also true that he's off to a much better mm -hmm. start and he looks concerned with the right stuff. Um, I think I think what we've seen is an ability to, to, to win games in even more ways than we saw last mm -hmm. year. And it, while the vibe feels that way... It, what does that amount to? It doesn't seem like anything, but over the course of 82 games, there might be valuable lessons that are learned here. Oh, there's no doubt and, about and, that. And they, we were asked earlier, we didn't get to it, about the Jokic-Murray 2 game, and I'm adamant about this. It was awesome how good they were in the playoffs, but it was all Denver had. And can they learn lessons across 82 games? Can they be a better team without relying on 1 and 2 so heavily? Right. It's good stuff. I'm with it. Yeah. Exactly. That's the <laughs> Are we looking to make no, more well, questions? Or well, what? no, the one thing I'll say, I guess, to, to build off of that is that every championship team has to, like, really go into themselves and, like, come face to face with the, the most difficult challenges. So if Denver breaks on this one, then they just weren't that team to begin with. Like, they weren't a championship team. Right. This is, a, this is, a, this is what they're going through. You have to go through in order to be great. Unless you're the 2016 Warriors no, that just agree. like steamrolled everyone for Every the whole season, the championship team comes out later and recounts their their tumultuous tumultuous exactly games, right? how important they were to who they became, and and uh, again a lot of this maybe even some of the Jokic and Jamal stuff we touched on earlier and the switching of roles, a positive way of looking at this is that this was inevitable. This was something we all saw as not just happening but needing to happen eventually, and it's just that the growing pains are a little sharper than we'd like. But this is maybe what it takes for them to come out the other side as a as a pretty butterfly. I still feel like th there's a move that could happen and that might happen at the trade deadline that could spark new life into the team. I keep coming back to that. And you were talking about that earlier, Adam, just like an injection of new life is sometimes healthy. And, um, you know, I've been for the we don't skip steps, the continuity, but I think I keep coming back to that. Like maybe just a, a little injection of life could uh i don't want to put you on the spot do you have any like is there names or archetypes i or? mean bradley beal right but that's hey, off, he can't happen you know, off the top line. why not he can't not, be traded until next season yeah of course of course of course um yeah i mean like uh covington but he's he's not i don't really... know that he's man he's like a super craig man <laughs> he's gonna make them better defensively but i mean again <laughs> there are gonna be a lot of kickouts to a wide open covington for like i think they just need to they need to just be back. I think Jokic yeah, just I agree. needs to be a, decide he's a top eight player again. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that's the biggest thing. I, I will end on this. Do you guys? Well, I don't know if we're ending. I, we I just can. want to make this point. <laughs> what, when's the last top eight player? Like, what, when's the last athlete you can remember that had a top eight in the world switch and did not always have that switch on? Mm. That chose to have that switch off as frequently as Jokic does. No, not as frequently for sure. I think it's unique. I really. Ricky do. Williams. Mm, that's a really. It's a, it's a scary comp to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned a p p uh, butterfly, and did you know that the uh, Latin root for butterfly is papilio, which means pavilion? So the butterfly pavilion is actually a, a clever you pun. Going to the butterfly. Clever, pavilion clever play. Well. So. <laughs> We can end on that, I think. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great. <laughs> next note. Thursday, don't forget. Next Thursday, guys, we are going to be at Blake Street Tavern. We're going to be our own butterfly, cocooned up, <laughs> and ready to emerge as something completely different. 
No, we're going to have a great time giving a, a, a live show where you can be a part of it. You can come and join. We're going to have a microphone. We're going to have all kinds of games to play, topics to cover. Um, and hopefully, between now and next week, it's like all excitement. And we're going to be playing the funky music live. And we're going to have a great time. But you come out. It's just a, it's a Thursday night. It's like a thing. Have you ever done this? Have you ever gone to a live recording of a podcast? If not, come check it out. It's a unique experience. And I promise you, you're going to have a good time. And worst case scenario, you hate us and you turn around and just get a shot at the bar. You're already at Blake Street Tavern. It's fine. It's a great point. <laughs> that is a great point. No, it's going to be a great time. Food, drink. Us. Us. <laughs> I mean, let's talk nuggets with us. You can ask me any question you want. Doesn't have to be about the nuggets. Literally any, literally any question that crosses your mind, please. Wow. Ask that's Harrison. right, Andre. That's right. And, and he has to answer. Just say, f- preface it with five star review, and then Harrison literally by law has to <laughs> respond. To that's it from the loser lounge. Thanks for.